Howdy, we're live again from the man cave here with Fast Wax Ski Wax and I thought I would cover today a little video on how to wax for cold weather, how to use the harder colder waxes. After the 2014 January February race season where we raced continually in cold weather I get a lot of questions about how do you iron it in, how do you scrape it, how do you wax and I looked at what some of the technicians were doing and some of the people and there's some just real fundamental uh, things that they can improve on to make waxing much easier. And it starts really with your tools. That you've got to have a really good iron, good sharp scraper, and a way to keep it sharp in order to wax for cold weather. So I've set a, a couple irons up here that are on the market to use, and I want you to focus more on the design, not the manufacture them. The irons are made in China and different manufacturers order these same model of irons but some of them work and some of them don't it starts with this is the common mouse iron although it does have a digital control in it it's a real lightweight iron when you put it on the ski the ski sucks the heat out of it the temperature drops real rapidly and on the high temperature waxes it drops too far to iron them in smooth and what happens is it starts chipping the wax and pushing it off the ski and doesn't work real well. So it's not one that works really well for the real cold waxes. The other iron here is kind of a typical design and it is not a digital iron, it just has an analog set point on it. With these you don't really know where you have it set. It works well for mid-range waxes, that type of thing, but when it comes to high temperature where you want to control it, and have it set exact, you really are guessing on this type of iron, so I suggest not using it. The best iron I've found is this style here. It's a digital control, but it also has a microprocessor in it. It's a heavy iron, it has a big thick base on it, so the temperatures on the iron is very stable, works extremely well, heats up, stays there, and I'll show you as I iron in, you can see that the temperature on the iron holds really close. Then the other thing that's important is to have a sharp plastic scraper. And the only way you can keep that sharp is having a scraper sharper. And Fast Wax makes one. This is made out of scrap wood out of a cabinet shop. It's got a file in it that's designed specifically for plastic. A few passes on it keeps your scraper sharp and keeps it working well so you can shear the wax off. If you're forcing to get the wax off the ski, it's generally because your scraper is not sharp. This is an essential tool for all of waxing. So what I'll do now is put these other irons away and I'll turn the one on that I'm going to use and I'll show you how to iron in, scrape and brush off the harder waxes. Howdy, we're back on the video and this time I'll show you on an alpine ski how to scrape, brush and iron in the wax on it. Alpine ski is very similar. One thing I do differently though is when I'm scraping and brushing I always wear protective gloves to protect my fingers. On an alpine ski you tune your edges first so that they're set. Then you iron your wax in. And the process is very much the same way for doing a Nordic ski, doing an alpine. So I'll go ahead and melt the wax into it, iron it in, and then I have a ski sitting here that I waxed a little bit ago. And I'll scrape and brush that off and show you how that works. Again, it's the same type of principle, big iron, heavy, and I drip the wax on again so I make sure that I can see I have a good flow of wax coming off the iron. And once you learn enough, you'll get enough skill at this that you get enough so that you wax the ski but don't drip too much over the edges of it. And then I'll also show something I do on the edges of an alpine ski. To, uh, make it a little bit easier to keep the edges clean and set. So I've got about a drop every half inch or a little bit more here. And then I'll iron the wax in. If you have a really wide ski, the Fat Boy skis, you may want to go down one side then the other. These are somewhere in between so I can hit both sides of them just with one iron and again I pull that down and you can see that I've just got a nice molten layer of wax behind the iron and I just keep it moving based on that speed and again 
again this is our low floral white wax extremely good extremely fast uh, cold weather wax and you can see I'm not chipping the wax off the irons pulling it under the set point is holding real nice so temperature control is extremely important I do this a little bit different is I take a scraper that I put a little notch in and I go down the edge of the ski and I scrape that wax off of the metal edge while the ski is still warm. It makes scraping it a little bit easier. And then I also scrape the wax off the tail of the ski where it curves up. Still warm, but also makes it a little bit easier to scrape the ski. Now what I'll do is take and set this ski aside and pull out the one that I waxed a few minutes ago, and I'll scrape and brush that. Out. I'll put the gloves on. Give my scraper a couple passes here to make sure that it's sharp. And I'll scrape and brush the seat. And you can see again the wax just shears right off there quite nicely. Efficiency of the brush, a couple passes work. Alpine skis, it's a little easier to use a roto brush on, so more people do that. The skis are wider, they're flatter, they have a metal edge. They tend to hold up to it a lot better. But if it's an all-out racing ski, I much prefer to use hand brushes on it. And you can see this is a real flat, very fine cold snow grind. So this is extremely fast ski in cold weather. The grinds on alpine skis are extremely important just as they are in Nordic. So you want to make sure you have a grind that matches the snow conditions. Fine grind for cold snow and a little coarser one for that wet snow. So again to summarize uh, just what we've gone through today. The key item is a good iron digital, something that will hold the set point with a microprocessor, heavy base to it, a sharp scraper. So you've got a scraper sharpener. This is a uh, set at a 90 degree, it has a file in it that's set specifically for plastic material, and a good set of brushes. Good soft stainless steel brush, a horsehair, and an nylon brush. 
Thanks for watching the video. If you got any questions on it, you can send us an email or give us a call. You can just look up the phone number on the website. And thank you.